Sports Community with Dan Harmon here on Yahoo. Thanks for doing the modern equivalent of tuning in. Uh, this is an episode that we thought would be easy. This was my attempt to make up for lost time and get back on schedule. <laughs> Chris McKenna and I thought if we just do a bottle episode inside the RV, what could be simpler? That'll probably shoot in like two days, right? Because it's so small. And there's nothing to do but just sit there and talk. Uh, more on that later. Abed is, Abed is referring to something that I've been kind of angry about for a while. I, this three weeks earlier trope in cinema and movies. All of this stuff out the window, of course, is green screen. Um, it turned out good. It didn't have to. That's one of the one of the many things about this episode that was very foolish. To think that we could get back on schedule, i.e., back on budget, by shooting inside an RV. Well, guess what? Ding dong. You didn't say anything about every this. single shot is an effects shot now. What they're talking about. God, who knows? They're sealed off behind this soundproof vinyl. I will drive my house off a cliff. Elroy, we're not here to snoop or judge you. You're not the first person to have dirty dishes, CD ROM porn, and frame photos of yourself with two biracial teenagers in a park. It's not that. Oh, wait. I may have miscalculated. Those two biracial teenagers being his daughters. Darn it. I want to hijack this RV, but I'm foiled by its impenetrable post-2001 security measures. You keep driving, and nobody... Um, so anyways, yeah, it turns out very, very, very difficult uh, to shoot this many people in a shoebox. Because guess what? You, <laughs> you can't fit... Uh, the crew in there. So we, you know, they had to take apart uh, Elroy's RV. I, I think then it turned out that wasn't going to work, um, just using the actual practical RV. And so then we built a set, a little tiny set, that's a slightly larger scale version of the RV. But all of the walls are, you know, they all fly out so that cameras can be at any given angle. And you got to cover this scene from every angle. And so it takes forever, forever. Uh, and then you add to that. This is, these exterior shots is all Jason Chandrasekhar, the director, going out with a second unit. And, uh, well, I guess it would, it's not a second unit if the director's there, right? But go, going out there with a unit and getting, like, um, we're all going to die. Uh, exterior shots on, the, on that mountain road. Uh, I think they used a drone for one of those shots. The ever popular drone. You've heard of them. Your president uses them. The drone. Um, the 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 uh, where was I? Oh, see you after this uh, blackness. All in favor? And that solves the matter. Of um, the hand. Yes, I'd like to move that we establish this moment as the opening for a flashback. The hand was a find by Rhonda Robinson. Um, we knew we could count on her. Um, that's green screen, by the way. That was a beautiful green screen shot on the CBS lot. Three weeks earlier thing. Abed, insert dialogue here about you dropping the fourth wall shtick. Nice. Careful you don't flood it. Um, that's the fifth time you reminded me not to flood something. I'm sorry, but it doesn't apply to our situation. I'm going to check the battery. Can you send someone or not? The the hand was we, we McKenna and I decided let's just have them driving let's just have them hauling something really weird really random on the roof. Hi, it's 
um, to tee up the three weeks earlier thing. Um, and uh, so we and we just said to Rhonda, what would that thing be? Um, meaning, what is giant and out there? And really, a, it was, there was just this hand um, that fits that is that size, that's an actual practical hand when you see it on top of the RV, that's really on top of the RV, and, and it, it fits perfectly. Uh, everything else was just like, oh, here's a giant chicken, but it's like, it's not giant enough, and it doesn't look enough like a chicken, and it's everything else was garbage. So really, there was just one thing out there um, that would work. Why would they put it in May? It's just sitting there in Memorial Day's shadow like a military Hanukkah. Uh, we felt like we needed to justify in the modern world why we didn't want to just say there's no cell service because that feels like an old cop-out now in these post-horror movie days of like, you know, okay, everybody always doesn't have a signal, even though they probably wouldn't have a signal. Um I, I, it felt a little hacky to say, oh, we have no signal and, and just move on. I, I, looking at it now, why? what's wrong with that? Just say you don't have a signal. What the fuck? They're out of gas. That's hacky. Um, the, but, but at the time, we just felt like, oh, there should be another reason why they're stranded there. And the reason is it's Armed Forces Day, which is big with tow truck drivers. We are here. This Stuck in a Rocky Mountain. On this green screen is, I mean, it's really notable. I mean, the, the this isn't the kind of episode you'd think you'd be thanking the special effects people uh, more than another episode because it's about people inside an RV. But again, these are all special effects shots. And if any of them is a little wonky, it's going to throw you right out of the narrative. And we've all seen, you know, even in great shows, some every once in a while you cut to a guy driving. And and there's that weird rim around him, or you just get you just have that overwhelming green screen sense, and it it, it just throws you right out of the narrative. Um, so the heroes of this episode, in addition to the usual ones, are the are the people that did all the color correction and the and the keying for this thing and making sure holding themselves to a higher standard because they knew how frightened we were that this thing was going to turn out to be... You know, there was an episode of The Office where they went to a landfill, and you can kind of tell that they they thought they'd go to an actual landfill and do an episode in a landfill, and they must have found out that maybe that, that didn't work as a location shoot, and so they ended up being green-screened and landfill backgrounds, and it, 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 it you know, it hurts. Flooded. That's just that's just me. That's just me airing a grievance. It's hard to be a jerk. Uh, it's even harder to be a jerk when people are rooting for you, and then you and then you're just like, hey, yeah, I'm rooting for me too, and then they're like, oh my god, you're a jerk. I rewire the secondary battery to the engine and hope it can start it. If it doesn't, we're spending a very cold night with two dead batteries. Okay, let's switch the batteries then. Good democracy. Are we sure the secondary battery won't just die too? Huh, it's a possibility. It exists. But I'm pretty confident because... The and it's, the, there was an actual arc that we had planned that was like about Jeff's insecurity about, uh, charging our phones. you know, being a man's man in Elroy's presence who knows more about automotive stuff. Like but and at some point, your phones now. we just dropped it both on page and then in the edit bay, like we just removed stuff that was there because it's just gilding the lily. It's just too much dialogue about how Jeff doesn't know about mechanics. It's, we get it.
There was more dialogue there. Position? His little speech went on a little bit. But, but uh, uh, Keith kept Keith kept bursting into a rage, and I, I, I didn't, I don't, it didn't feel right. I didn't want everybody yelling at each other the whole episode. So most conventional weapons don't require electricity. And are you going to eat me first? Yeah, that wasn't a great act blow, was it? Those crickets. This would be a challenging place to practice your stand-up act. So I rented Hotel Rwanda the other night. Let me just say, not a date movie. I uh, I had the writer's room write the Dean's stand-up act. Like uh, there was a lot of material. Like, uh, like, I think they wrote a comedy album worth of stand-up material. <laughs> There's no other business. If we're doing this, I'd like to restate the importance of telling some of the story with flashbacks. What do you mean by restate? Oh my god, I fell for it. Meeting adjourned. Um, we, we struggled for a while about what's what's the deal with Abed's thing, and it really, all of these choices, the final choices about how it plays into the story, were made in the edit bay by Ruthie Aslan. Um, and myself, the um, kind of picking like where is uh, where are we gonna rehit the idea that Abbott's trying to do these flashbacks because we we had more of them than you're seeing and we and we ha and they could have been placed anywhere they were placed very randomly in the script um, and then in the edit bay it was like ah they're getting in the way here and it's just so sticky and so we just kind of it was in post production that we kind of wrote that story really with the footage we had is a totem of distrust. Sorry for that, too. No, oh, Roy, that's big of you. And for our part, we're sorry that charging our perfectly normal cell phones destroyed your weirdly fragile RV. Okay, I'm sorry about that apology. I'll try to be a better house guest. I wish we had more episodes so we could see more of Elroy and Jeff together. Sorry I've been unavailable. I've been trying to cut to three weeks earlier. It really feels like we needed that. I have something to apologize for. <laughs> Jeff hates Abba. <laughs> And it seemed as though we drove through a skunk patch. Yeah, you're getting hot. Yeah, you're smoking yeah, you're getting hot. Getting stoned. Oh, okay. I remember thinking I really pulled that one off. You thought that because you were high. You also thought that we were speeding because you kept seeing the same bird. <laughs> All in favor? And that solves the matter of the giant hand if there's no other business. Let me just explain the need for flashback here, and don't interrupt. Okay, one quick thing, and then you can talk about flashbacks forever. Meeting adjourned. Okay. So we don't know if this is actually happening. Earlier on TV, they're not traveling in time, dip ass. Jeff. Okay, my apology now. Um, time to think we'll find out later. It's not. Excited. But, uh, what yeah, there's, I mean, there's flashbacks. We could have done them anywhere, because we had all this coverage of Abed doing that, like, flashing back thing. And, uh, yeah. I mean, there's flashbacks where he's, like, yeah. trying not to raise his hand uh, as if that would, you know, change history. So he's, like, struggling to lower his own hand and can't do it. And it all turned out to not be necessary. Because this is the story that we're really tracking to the extent that we're tracking something because it has emotional weight. I forgive all of you. <laughs> What? <gasps> then that solves the matter of the giant hand. If there's no other business... In a normal road trip story, the first act would end with us deciding to go on the trip. The second act would be the trip ending with a disaster. And the third act would be us getting back. The problem is we've already decided to take this trip weeks from now, which means the story starts with us already on the road, which means the end of act one won't be us going on the trip. It'll have to be the disaster, which means something even worse has to happen in act two, unless we make the decision right now that act one is a flashback, so that the beginning of the story is now instead of then. It's true. It's very true. You forgive us? Absolutely. You turd. I beg your pardon, guys? You have no sense of accountability. You're like a child. Well, if I'm a child, you're a child abuser. Nah, not cool, Annie. You never just said, leave <laughs> uh, the, my the writer's room. Is. I like 
like it there. I demand it stay. Because everyone complained about it. Well, where's that commitment to spinelessness when we're all admitting we did stuff wrong? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a bad It's team. very, very okay, hard to no, find new things to do with stuff. characters that you love and know so well and have been through so much with. The Dean has has burst into tears so many times. Um, so I do value for this episode that he he's doing it, and now he's being told that's not enough. And I will say I'm sorry. However, I you need to be responsible, I'm not sorry. accountable. It's my giant hand, and I love it. We're not selling it. Like he's very accustomed to just crying and having that be the end of the story, and it always has been. He cries, and then everyone hugs him, and. No, I mean, it's cold in the RV. I don't care how we treat the Dean's night. Abed, don't go after There was a point where that was the act break, I think. Yeah. It's very strange. It's a very, very freewheeling season, man. Did they send you out here to be mean to me, too? No. Good, because I can't cry anymore unless someone brings me a Pedialyte. <laughs> um, that was a, that was a right, that was a joke room joke. Um, this is green screen on CBS again. Looks great. There's, there's that, that guardrail is practical, uh, but they're shooting this like against the wall of a parking garage outside the writer's bungalow. Pretty comforting, huh? We could have put it outside. I mean, you can kind of, you know, you can, you can obviously tell this is green screen. I mean, as far as your expert eye, like, but th there's a difference between being able to tell and no, having it story, and I know slap you in the face Great. and and insult you for the one for believing the, the story is happening. Like, like <laughs> we, when we're in front of a night sky, we, the foreground elements are supposed to pop. They're supposed to be like a rim light and, you know, and all this stuff. So it, it, it a regular night sky shot would does have a, a mystical quality to it anyway. So green screen is more forgivable, I think, at night. And it's kind of remarkable how much sound matters. Mark Binder and his his peeps, like um, with the crickets and the creating the, the you knowing that you're outside, also helps draw your eyes sus uh, disbelief down. I told I told those guys to. I told those I can't remember. I'm, I'm, Danny and his uh, live tweeting like mentioned the my direction to them. Really stupid question, Annie. Obviously, something fell off the roof. The question is, what? So, um... <laughs> oh, Ed, where's the Dean? So, uh, this act ends with Britta squeezing and trying to squeeze into the hand after the Dean, like, locks himself in the RV. Um, the, uh... It was supposed to be, the idea was supposed to be that the hand was still palmed down, so she was trying to get into the hand for shelter, like it was like an igloo. And and the image was just her butt, like, wriggling around as she was squeezing into this giant hand. Uh, so I was really disappointed when I saw this at first, but then I realized this is actually funnier that Jeff thinks this is hot. <laughs> Because you can draw all kinds of uh, thematic conclusions from that. Like, oh, Jeff is this, you know, the idea that it's a hand, the idea that our prop master's only prop that she could find was a hand, even though it could have been anything, but it was a hand. And, you know, then we write the story around this hand, and then we're discovering, you know, it's like, and the, the idea of a hand being something with which you can grip or release um, and that, that makes humans different from animals. And uh, um, it, it, and and then on top of that all, to just have Britta squeezing into it, and she looks like Fay Ray in the King Kong movie, and Jeff's looking at it and saying, "What's wrong with me if that's hot?" Um, I don't know. What's you know? It's a it's a woman contained in a giant hand. What is wrong with you? Um, it, it's I love it that I mean that stuff to me is like so cool that when we when we make things like we're the things that we make are bigger than us. I appreciate your appeal to my well-known passion. And I'm not being pretentious by saying that because you can hear me over and over again on these commentaries talking about what a jackass and, and a bad writer and, and stuff I am. I, 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 I don't retire because 
accidents make for amazing things, and I want to be part of those accidents. Slap this slaps the fuck out of him. That's insane. Uh, you enjoy this. What has gotten into you? I mean, I can't I think I can't remember if it says in the script that he's that he slaps him, but and I love I love what emerges is Frankie's you know, Frankie's dynamic with Abed. Like she's sort of like very early Britta. And that she has so much respect for him, but she, but it is predicated on the idea that Abed is somehow Special, so sad, in, in quotes. Here, all those centons ago. So sad. So preventable. Space Elder Abed, can you reach backward with your mind and <laughs> save our species? These, again, these actors getting these pages. I'm Space Elder Britta. <laughs> Sorry, I keep laughing at my own show. Uh, but, I mean, it's what just... <laughs> it's just Britta, you know, even as a, even as a space elder, she's still... She's still the worst space elder. It's just funny. I I know you know. Um. Yeah, I mean, I just hand pages to them, and I, like, like it. You know, I I and I I wrote that in such a way because we were behind schedule, and they did have to shoot it in an hour. So it's like I don't want to tell the wardrobe department you need to go find Matrix outfits, and you need to dye eyebrows, and you need to do all stuff. It's like if you want, you can just grab gray wigs. Or fake beards with strings on them, like it would it would still work. Like it's designed to, you know, I'm right I'm writing that because we're behind schedules. It would still work narratively because it's in Abed's mind if the be if it was just really low budget. Um, but that's what those guys can do with no time. You know, they make something that 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 looks as good as a direct to video kickboxing movie, like like in an hour one hour from seeing those pages and they throw that together which is absolutely intimidating oh elroy is on the other side of the rv because he had to leave for a day um so we, we so i just literally had him go to the other side of the rv wrote that stuff and i think it was dan guterman who wrote the compass uh, compass in the boot thing which was awesome the locked on that side too this <laughs> It, it's all worth it because of this. I'd be lying if I said I didn't poop. <laughs> you lie, then. Sure I can. <laughs> sure I can. <laughs> it, it's uh, that that made it all worth it. Um, really cool job by Jay Chandrasekhar, always coming in and oh uh, Chang. Chang was shooting his pilot for Dr. Ken. <laughs> you can hear him saying the reason I'm covered in, in feathers is because keep a loose grip that's CG it says on there we didn't know what to write on the bracelet for a while hi this is here's the amazing Matt Besser um I am calling to confirm that you have the correct I think Jewel Bestrop recommended him we live at the end of a long um, driveway which often gets confused this is a really weird thing to say and a really weird place to say it but um we lost a friend that was very active in UCB, Harris Whittles, who was a writer on Parks and Rec. Um, we're shooting this just after, um, you know, a few weeks after losing him. And uh, um, I had just been to the memorial service for him. And Matt, um, among, uh, you know, everybody from Parks and Rec and everybody had stood up and shared memories of Harris. And it was all very inspiring and comforting. But Matt in particular, not that it's a competition. But what are you gonna do? What if I hadn't heard what Matt Besser said about Harris and how we should Everything deal with his end. passing, like, I, I, I wouldn't have left that memorial knowing how to cope with it. Like, he blew my mind and turned it into an amazing thing. But back to our comedy show. Um... I, I, I've loved Matt since, I mean, his work since, like, Cross Balls. If you can find Cross Balls on, uh, it was it used to be on Comedy Central. It was, just, it was an amazing format for a show. Um, 
And that there's these kids holding a rope for a giant kite. And continue to buy giant sized versions of everyday objects when they are the reason. Uh, the original joke was simply the guy is uh, waiting for his giant hand, and then he, the reveal of the giant watch would be enough of a tag. But I've just been obsessed this season with the idea. I think it's because you can feel the end coming. I, I guess these tags all sort of collectively suggest to you. It's going to be okay because, like, there, it, 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 we're talking about, we're not talking about community. We're talking about just comedy and writing and stuff. Like, seeds can fall anywhere and grow into forests. Like, uh, anything can be a spinoff or a, a, you know, a fan fiction or, you know, like, it, it, it not, not, don't worry about, about the things you love going away. Um, I, I think unconsciously that's what we were sort of like doing by doing all these tags that are so uh, spin offy. There's a story around every corner. There's you can you can do your own thing. There's everything's a franchise. Um, it's all part of getting getting ready to let go. Eventually, we'll have to. I'm not saying now, but eventually. <laughs> <laughs>